Would you like to know the best way to destroy this quiet and idyllic picture? Stand in front of it and fall off the curb because you don't know where it is. Hi, uh, it's me again. Uh, Hasn't been a lot of updates uh, lately. This has nothing to do with it. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to record the intro out here because uh, this only happens once every couple of years here at Tacoma, uh, in the Puget Sound region, really. Um, they call it Snowmageddon, and for good reason. Uh, I walked here from home because uh, uh, I ain't going up these hills in uh, when it's this slick out in a car, but. Uh, I felt like I was in the mood to get some work on the channel and the radio station done, so I piled stuff in a backpack and came on up. So there has, like I said, there hasn't been much going on at the studio lately. Uh, not because of this. Uh, I've been kind of down. Uh, you know, everybody has their down days, some more than others, some uh, a lot more than others. But there has been some stuff happening at the studio. Um, oh, do you need it? Okay. But there has been some stuff happening at the studio. Uh, I got to test my amplifier. Uh, that was nice. Um, also did some wiring. It's now beginning to really look like a radio station. Um, but there's not much really to show that that's really camera worthy. So I thought maybe I would show you, uh, some of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, so I, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll get you up to date on what's happening in the studio, but then I think I'm going to show you some, uh, work I did in 2019, uh, to help me build some of this automation stuff that powers KTPA behind the scenes. Now I want to see how this works out. See you in a minute. Here I am doing the initial fit of the equipment that will go in the under rack. That's a Crown D75. Um, some exhaust fans, power supplies, the auxiliary in. Then a audio patch panel, the digital interface and a computer to go along with it. Uh, I did some stuff on the top, but for some reason um, that didn't get recorded, so this is all I've got to show you. Now on to the next bit. Welcome back to the soldering desk. I've cleaned it off for this presentation. So it's a few years ago, and you're getting KTQA on the air, and you're a Unix guy and definitely not a, a, a Windows guy, and do you need some sort of radio automation software? Is there closed source stuff for Linux? Not that, see, not that you can tell. Um, is there open source stuff for Linux? Yeah, but a lot of it is in questionable shape and operational ability and re would require a lot of work between you and the solution. So what do you do? Well, you get your text editor out and you build one and you don't really make a lot of really smart decisions about how things are built, so you decide uh, to build a radio automation software, or a radio automation system, in the programming language that you are at the time probably most facile in, which in this case is PHP. It is embarrassing, I agree, but it works, and the thing is, I just needed to go from zero to radio automation software pretty quickly. Uh, now, we've stuck with it, um, even though there are other options now, because I want to write a radio automation software package uh, that fits closer to my notions of how it should function. Um, but I'm using it as kind of a prototype. Uh, I was planning on dropping it this year and moving to something else, but scheduling didn't really permit that. And, you know, the, the opportunity to make a studio uh, happened, and, and that clearly takes precedence. Um, but I wanted something to work on. Like, I can't just write software and spoot it directly to KTQA, because if it breaks, then 
you know, we're broadcasting dead air, that's a bad thing. So I needed something to test on. So what I basically needed was a radio station in a box. So I built one. This is its case. So let's take it out of the case. Ta-da! I call it Merker because I name a lot of my things after old, um, old uh, pirate radio operations or clandestine radio operations, if you will. Um, it is laser cut out of scrap acrylic, and it is hobbled together off of parts I mostly had on hand, and it is a radio station in a box. Um, so let's take a look at it. On the outside, you can see there's not much to it. There's, uh, there's vent holes over here. There's, um, you know, it's bolted together. There's a display. There's another display. And then on the side here, there's a knob. This is the only external control. There is a place for power, which is USB-A, because that was the simplest way to do it. And then there's an external USB port, and that's it. That's all it takes, and the power supply for it is this brick with this on the end. It just plugs right in. So let's open it up and take a look. And opening it up is, and you can see, so the name of the software that I wrote is called Caroline. And you might be able to see here. There we go. Caroline Development System. And then there's some text on the side there, power, data, you can see it. And then over here, well, you know what? Actually, that might look better. Let's uh, return to normal here. There we go. All right. I really kind of wanted to add acorn bolts, cap bolts to these. Um, but by the time I thought of it, um, it became kind of pointless for reasons I'll explain later. But you just, these are finger tight, so you just twist these off. And this guy pops right off. So here, on the top, um, you can see this is labeled... This is labeled 3.3 volts. This is one of those um, backup USB can uh, LCD panels that you can buy on eBay. I opened it up. It, no, they normally take um, composite video in and 12 volts in. I opened it up, uh, looked around, and see that there was a voltage regulator that uh, regulated to 3.3 volts. So I just, you know, kind of worked around the 12 volt regulator so that it could take 3.3 volts directly. Um, this device here is 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 the trans is the transmitter. It was a little module I bought on eBay. It puts out very little power because it's got to stay Part 97 certified, and I definitely want to stick to that rule. Um, is it Part 97? Isn't it three microvolts at 100 meters or something like that? But um, it will take audio in or USB in, where it will act like a USB um, sound card, which is how I'm using it, and then puts it out on FM radio. Um, so let's set that aside. Let's see. What is what is the best way for me to do this? This is always a bit of a bit of a pain. I don't want to completely assemble it. This just comes out. It says uh, made in. Uh, oh. Made in 2019 by, here. Hello. Made in 2019 by Sam. Uh, this is just some venting holes so that uh, the power goes where it needs to go. Um, these are the controls, obviously. And then down here I have a strip of uh, copper tape that uh, acts as the antenna 
for the FM transmitter. And then we have the heart of the thing. This is a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, the power comes from, from the USB mount here into here. Uh, this is... Um, connected to the audio port he, uh, of the Raspberry Pi 3, but we're not using it for audio, obviously, because we're using the USB audio capabilities of, um, of the little FM transmitter from eBay. And, um, and then this goes off for powering the, powering the LCD panel. Um, and then here we've got the USB connection to, uh, to the FM transmitter, so that powers the that powers the FM transmitter and then provides the audio interface. This is uh, this USB port here is a pass through for uh, to this plug the the D labeled plug here for data, um, so that I can plug keyboards or USB or whatever uh, USB uh, drives into it or whatever, and then under it is. Yeah, do I need here? Let's pull that out. And then under it is a USB to a uh, micro SD card, and that micro SD card holds the content for the radio station on it. Um, and then on the 40 pin header, uh, I have this disused IDE cable over to this daughter board here. And what this daughter board has on it is a 3.3 volt regulator for the uh, for the LCD driver. Um, it's a linear regulator to keep, you know, I mean, I have a ton of them on hand and it keeps the, the noise down. Um, this is a real-time clock module for the Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi has no way to keep time without a network. And an accurate clock is actually kind of necessary for a radio station. And since I intended this to be kind of a radio station in the in a box, it needed an accurate clock. So I added this RTC module here. Um, the rest of this is some transistors and uh, and header pins for reading the the uh, rotary encoder here. And then, or no, the transistors aren't for reading the rotary encoder. My apologies. Uh, it's just some header pins for reading the rotary encoder. And then the transistors are for driving the pins on the FM transmitter, because we need to be able to set the volume and the frequency of uh, of the transmitter. So what this does is the Raspberry Pi uh, intercepts the um, the up and down pulses of the rotary encoder uh, in its first mode. Uh, turning it up and down will change the frequency of the transmitter, and it's you you click it and then it moves to volume mode, and then you can set the volume of the transmitter. And then if you click it back, it goes back to frequency. But if you click it three times, it issues a shutdown to the Raspberry Pi so that I don't need to get into it, um, into the, uh, I don't need a USB cable to turn, or a USB keyboard to shut it off. This is kind of broken because I dropped it. Um, and I would fix it, but, uh, I'm actually intending on replacing this whole unit, and I'll explain a little bit later. Um, that's really all there is to it. I mean, it's just a Raspberry Pi in a funky enclosure with some extra things hanging off of it. But this runs basically all of the software that is required to um, run KLAY, the software that I'm... or not KLAY. <laughs> KLAY was three radio stations ago. Uh, to run KTQA, which is kind of by design. Uh, because if we can run it on a single thing, if we can run all of the radio station software on a single board computer, I know I am running minimal resources. Um, I have no intention of running KTQA at the transmitter site off of a single board computer. I want the robust hardware and power supplies and remote access that server grade hardware brings. But my I, have a, I am a lot more flexible on what kind of server-grade hardware I use if it uses minimal resources. And frankly, uh, radio shouldn't require huge resources. So let's put this guy back together. How about that? Mm.
I wanted it to be repairable in the field, but I didn't want to have to repair it in the field. So it, it doesn't come together super easy, but... So I have one of those very cheap 35 watt CO2 lasers at home, and I cut this box myself. Um, and uh, through some contacts, I get garbage acrylic, and that lets me fabricate cases for things relatively inexpensively. My biggest problem, though, is that there's no fixed position for a laser cutter in my house. And a laser cutter is something that really needs a fixed position, because it needs venting to the outside. We tried converting one of my bathrooms into a laser cutter room, but the thing is, it's upstairs where there's it's it's an attic bathroom so it's not um it was it it didn't work my trials and travails of laser cutting might require its own video at some point i built a a really i built a weird cart for it out of uh uh construction lumber and casters and whatnot and um yeah so that's a fun one so let's Plug it in. <laughs> USB type A, it's always upside down. Why can't we have a good NT NTSC, like never the same color twice kind of acronym for USB? That tells us that um, it's always upside down. So this is firing up. It's I don't know why it's firing up in high mode. Why aren't you turning on? Uh oh. Nope, oh, no, there it is. Okay, then it fires up an X session with a very small uh, window manager and just displays uh, an interactive output of what the of what the software is doing. And yeah, oddly enough, um, uh, Caroline, even though it's written in a web programming language, doesn't have a web interface. Okay, so it's in volume mode, so I turn the knob, and it's turning the volume up and down. Again, doesn't work quite right because I dropped it. But now I can change the frequency. And then it's telling me what it's playing. It's playing a commercial from GTA 4. And uh, it's playing on 87.9, part 15, that's okay. Or at least I think it's okay. Um, so let's listen to it. I'll set it over here. Of course, the minute I set it down, it starts doing things that makes me go, uh, wonder what's happening. If you can see the lights dimming, Becky's in the other room wiring up the board, uh, and she's using the heat gun to label things. Sorry. So that's what that is. Um, among my recently purchased toys, this one was kind of an accident, but I'm glad I did it, is I got one of those HackRF Porta Packs that lets you use it remotely without a computer, uh, which is a lot of, in which is pretty interesting to play with. Uh, I haven't done much in the way of transmitting it yet, other than uh, some stuff on ham radio, but, uh, but um, you know, using it as a receiver is great. But I'm going to set it over here, because we're going to use this Surface tablet. GQRX. I don't need anything funny. You'd be a little debutante. Yeah. It'd be like your oh, hey, it's uh, yeah, an episode of Ask an Atheist from a few years ago, according to the display over here. Yell at the rent is too high. But, uh, yeah. This is, this is yeah. Ask an Atheist with me, Sam Alby, 844 Skeptic, 844 That's our voicemail number, toll free world, yeah, worldwide. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Over the phone system. Yeah, you'll notice it's not right on 80, 87.9 bang on. I've noticed that this module, is its oscillator, is a little off. It's one of those cheapy one-chip um, FM transmitters, so there's not much I can do about the oscillator, really. Um, 
this is not something you but, actually want. Un <laughs> but surprisingly, <laughs> the FM output is remarkably clean, which I'm I was I was quite happy with. So let's um right. here, just to prove that Just to prove that I have control of, of this of this machine, let's uh, plug in a keyboard. I've been watching politics very closely for a long time now, and I no longer believe that. Oh crap! Political discussion. No. Boo. Um. There. Come on. Come on. No. No. All right. I'm just gonna cut this out until it's ready. I actually put the station IDs of a number of other radio stations on this to do top of the hour ID for testing top of the hour ID stuff. And then it goes to a, a Grand Theft Auto. Let's not do a content content ID map, so I'll turn that down. I mean, the wave band, the, the waveform, the baseband, what word am I looking at here? The spectrum here looks really wide because we're literally right, like, Here's the antenna, there, here's the antenna, there's the receiver about a foot away. So it looks a lot bigger than it is, but it looks, um, on a spectrum analyzer, it doesn't look so bad. Um, but, uh, eh, it doesn't put out power for nothing anyway, so I don't particularly care. But this is how I've been writing the radio station software, is this is, this is my own little radio station that goes with me everywhere. Um, so why I'm not repairing this is, uh, for a few reasons. One, it's a Raspberry Pi 3. I'd like to, I plan on tracking whatever the most modern Raspberry Pi is. The Raspberry Pi 4 is out. It has more RAM. It has better Wi-Fi. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's an important point. Um... I also want better storage because the storage on this thing with the USB uh, micro SD cards in the um, in both the Raspberry Pi and on off of USB incredibly slow. The next version of this is going to have either MSATA or M2 storage on it. Uh, it would be nice if it was a little bit uh, smaller. Um, I'm going to be replacing this composite display with a. Uh, probably with an I2C uh, or, or I2C, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, one, of, one of those TFTF uh, frame buffer devices. So that looks a little bit sharper, and I don't have to worry about overscan issues on this one. And then I found an FM transmitter that I can speak to on a UART rather than having to toggle uh, transistors, which will be nice. And then finally, I'm going, well, not finally, but... One thing I am is I'm going to put a uh, RTL, I'm going to put in an, an SDR, an RTL SDR for listening to another radio station for um, mock emergency alerts. Like, I, I want it to be a complete radio station in a box, including the ability to follow EAS alerts like radio stations in the United States are supposed to. Um, and then finally, I want it to work a little bit better with... Uh, um, external peripherals. I'm putting in a, it's going to have, um, it might have HDMI out, but it's definitely going to have USB-C rather than this crap that I've got working with now. Um, I'm hoping to make it work a little bit better with USB power banks so I can make it more portable um, because that would be handy. But I'm going to leave the basic control of the single knob to turn off and adjust frequencies and whatnot. I'm basically going to leave that alone because um, that worked out really well. And if I needed it to do anything else, this thing will sniff around for um, Wi-Fi networks that it knows about and automatically connect to it. So like that doesn't have to change. The software on here is great. It could just be a little bit ha faster, but I want to do a. Com I'm I'm doing such a hardware overhaul of this that it just seems more like it, it seems like it would be easier if I just rebuilt the whole thing and had this be a uh, shelf conversation piece or maybe reappropriated for another project than to retrofit all the stuff I plan to do into this case. 
So this is Merker, uh, which is my Caroline development platform. So um, if you guys are interested in, in if, if anyone's interested in watching me build the next version of this, I would be, I, I'd be up for, for doing that uh, on Waveform Orchard, but I don't know what's interesting to people, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's not like I have a lot of viewers yet, or will have a lot of viewers ever, so I don't know what, what drives people to, to watch what I'm doing, even when they do, other than perhaps being interested in KTQA or, or me. Um, those two things are definitely possibilities. Uh, like and subscribe? I don't know. Um, yeah, someday I'll sit down and talk about how I feel about YouTube and why I got back to YouTube anyway, but that's a conversation for another day. Anyway, this is, this is something I thought would be interesting to you, and uh, I hope it was. Hello. Hi, I'm terminating at 5. E. Cables. That's all. And it's raining right there. It... Want to talk about the leaks? Uh, yeah, there are three persistent leaks in this studio. And by persistent, we mean really, really, really without stop, just one drip every 80 to 240 seconds. I think it's worth saying that it's non-stop because this is the Pacific Northwest. Oh, and it's winter, and it's raining, or snowing, or whatnot. Yeah. Yes. It's leaking from the outside, not from, like, a pipe inside. So this is Becky, the true host of Waveform Orchard. So that wraps it up for episode 11. What I was planning on ending with was a uh, Goodwill find. Uh, we went out to Goodwill last week to find some parts, and I happened to stumble upon a uh, old POS, uh, point of sale system, that I was able to turn on and interrogate and discover that it was an older but still quite functional i5, and it had an integrated touchscreen and everything like that, and I thought, wow, that would be actually a really nice workstation to sit here on, on the, uh, at the production desk so you could, you know, modify settings as you were going, and I got Linux booted on it, and um, everything worked pretty well except the touchscreen, and while I was in the guts of serial touchscreens because it, uh, it prevent it presented its touchscreen data on a serial port. Uh, I discovered that the fans in it were pretty loud, uh, at, pretty loud, and also uh, switching clearly switching between two power states as it was just sitting there idling, and that doesn't make for a good uh, workstation in a uh, in a studio because it's just it's harder to filter out, and I mean chances are it's quiet enough that it wouldn't make it into the microphones, but if it did, the fact that it's variable makes it more difficult to filter out, and so it just wouldn't work for the studio. Fortunately, I have this touchscreen right here I picked up at a recycler, uh, and I can put the computer for that in the production desk, so I don't have to worry about sound there. So I'm not out of luck, but uh, that machine ended up not working out. And I did find a really nice home stereo amplifier for, uh, for my desk. Uh, for redstone in there, and that'll be nice. So while that was going on, Becky was cutting and trimming Cat5, as you saw, and so a lot of the wiring in here is actually getting fairly close to done. I just have to do basically the last six inches on a few things, from the, the punch downs to and terminate into the devices, and then we can start testing. I'm also going to start working on some of the custom circuitry that we're going to need to switch between different source inputs on the digital inputs. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's coming up. Anyway, see you next time. Now's the time on the show where I thank the people who help support me. These are the patrons. If you'd like to be one of them, you can go to my Patreon. The link for it is at the bottom of the page. Uh, I have no intention of monetizing this channel uh, or doing sponsorships or anything like that, so this is the way for support. 
uh, for now and the near future. Anyway, see you soon.